Welcome to Developing Solutions for Google Cloud Platform. Hey everyone, this is Ben Finkel, and in this nugget, I'm here to introduce you to CPD 200. CPD 200 is the first in a 200 series of courses produced by Google, and the 200 courses are introducing Google Cloud Platform from a variety of different role-based perspectives. CBD 200, of course, is for developers, but CPA 200 is going to be for systems architects, CPO 200 for systems operators, and even CPB for big data professionals. Now, all of these courses, like the number 200 implies, are not meant to be introductions to the platform. You should already be intimately familiar with Google Cloud Platform from the CP100 Google Cloud Platform Fundamentals course. You can watch that right here at CBT Nuggets, Gar Schulte has done an awesome job introducing the entire cloud platform through that series. Once you finish CP100 and you feel comfortable with Google Cloud Platform, you can move on to these 200 level courses, which, I've got to be honest, assume that you have some basic knowledge of working with Cloud Platform already. Now this nugget itself is going to walk you through a simple course description of CPD 200, as well as talking about the target audience and covering an agenda for all of the nuggets inside of the course. We're going to finish by showing you how you can download some official courseware from Google that's going to include labs, slides, and um, different code samples, both in Python and Java, so that you can work through CPD 200 from the official Google material at your own pace if you want. Let's start off with a course overview. Now, as you should already know, Google Cloud Platform is made up of a lot of different products, utilities, and services that you can use to deploy solutions. There's big data utilities, there's monitoring and logging utilities, there's compute utilities for systems operators. Well, CBD 200 is all about developing applications, and to that end, it's going to teach us how to use the tools and the products inside of the suite that are most suited for application developers and application architects. That means things like Google App Engine and Data Store and Cloud Endpoints. So we're going to kind of pick and choose, and each 200 level course is going to do this. It's going to pick and choose the products that make the most sense for the role that we are discussing, the perspective of the role that we're talking about. That means that our target audience is a little bit narrow. Specifically, of course, we want solution developers. Those are really the, the folks that this course is aimed at, but solution architects and operation professionals will also have a lot to get out of this. Not only because we're going to be talking about monitoring and logging, things that they may be interested in, but also because we're going to see how we can, at a very overall level, organize and architect our application to be really efficient and really take advantage of what Google Cloud Platform offers. Now that means that the agenda for this course is a busy one. Of course, we are introducing GCP for developers. That's what we're talking about right here. That's what we're looking at. Uh, up next, we're going to talk about specifically the different services and tools that as developers we want to use on Google Cloud Platform. So we're really going to take a look at what we will use throughout this course. Uh, we'll have some example architecture so you can see at a very high level how solutions are architected on Google Cloud Platform. After that, we get into the uh, meat of the nuggets here, and we start talking about how you can actually set up and work on Google Cloud Platform. So we're going to create our workspace, our project inside a Cloud Platform. We're going to develop and deploy an application. We're going to learn about GC or GAE modules. Modules inside of Google App Engine are ways to develop separate, independent applications that run inside of the same App Engine instance. From there, we'll learn about endpoints. Endpoints are really easy ways for GAE to produce API endpoints available on the web. They can even be secured, and we can consume them from any kind of different applications, mobile, uh, desktop, laptop, etc. We'll learn about user authentication and credentials on Google App Engine, so how you can set up authentication inside of your GAE application. Then we'll take a look at the different monitoring and management tools that are available out there, and that includes things like cloud debugger and cloud logging. We're going to work on push to deploy with Jenkins so that you can learn how to set up an entire push to deploy continuous integration setup on an app engine. You've got to use the, um, the product Jenkins to do that. We'll talk a little bit about storage. We're going to learn a little bit about Google Cloud Storage, Google SQL, and then we're going to focus on data store for the next few nuggets after that. We'll learn about queries and indexes, entity groups and transactions, all about how you can efficiently and effectively use data store as a persistent backend storage for your GAE application. Then we'll finish up by talking about performance and optimization. We'll learn about task queues, how you can set up task queues in order to um, maintain high availability in your application while still processing a lot of requests or a lot of data. And we'll finish by looking at how you can deploy mobile applications with Google App Engine as well. All right, let me walk you through how you can uh, register for this course and get access to the official Google course materials. If you sign in here at myclass.gcptrain.org, you're going to be presented with this page right now. You just fill in your email address right here and fill in the code 7YRT. 
TPA. What that's going to do is that's going to open up a ton of course materials, the official CPD200 course materials for you. And those are always going to be the most up-to-date course materials. As Google updates and changes and refreshes this course over time, you can always log back in to content.gcptrain.org and get access to all of the content for all the courses that you've registered for. You may have already gone through this with CP100, and if so, when you sign in with this code, you'll see both CP100 as well as CPD200 materials up there for you. Let me take a uh, walk through it live on a browser and show you how it's done. So here I am at myclass.gcptrain.org, and notice that I've signed in on an incognito mode browser. I have a lot of different Google accounts. You may as well. Uh, if that's the case, it's a good idea to sign in as incognito mode so that you know that you are signing in as the correct user, the user that you actually want to connect to the materials with. In my case, it's cbd200.nuggets at gmail.com, and here I've entered in the code 7YRTPA. Now I'm just going to go ahead and click Submit, and you can see that it's registered for me for the course. It gives me two different links. Content.gcptrain.org is really the easy one to remember. I'll uh, select that, and it's going to load my content up for me. And over on the left-hand side, I can see CPD200, Developing Solutions. Here inside of this link is all of the official slides and lab documentation from Google for CPD200. You can select any one of these and walk through their version of this course. Now it's important to note that while my course is going to cover at a very high level all the same topics and information as this, I don't follow along exactly with their modules and I definitely don't implement their lab work. So while I've nuggetized everything here for our use and easy consumption inside of a video uh, deployment system, you're going to see that this is really ideal for working through yourself, sitting down, opening up and reading through a module, and then hitting the associated lab, either in Python or Java, that goes with that module. If you're having trouble with any one particular topic or you just want to see the most recent up-to-date information from Google on this material, this is where you want to come, content.gcptrain.org. Okay, that concludes the course introduction for CPD200, Developing Solutions for Google Cloud Platform. Remember, CPD200 is all about the solutions developer. Those of us who are writing the code for applications that are going to be deployed on GCP that are going to be highly available and highly scalable. Up next, we're going to talk about all the different developer services and the specific tools that we want to use when we're working with GCP as a developer. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.